take time to be holy. Speak up with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitter for service aboard. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Divine, you have placed in your world all we need to be perfect, to be equipped, to be victorious to excel and to enter heaven. You have also placed in your world what we need as a ministry body, team workers, achieving a divine purpose. God, we are speaking to bless ourselves in Christ according to that which you have given to us in your word and by your spirit. Thank you for this gift. Bless the ears that hear. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're taking the message do not tempt God as some do. Do not tempt God as some do. Can you say it? Some tempt God. And for those who tempted God, they see it. They see his works. They see his power. They see his wrath. They see his promise. They see their end. Some tempt God. And the Bible says, don't tempt God. Now, in the temptation of Jesus, Satan came to him and wanted Jesus to tempt God. To tempt God. The temptation of Jesus from Satan is to make Jesus commit sin. But tempting God is not to make God commit sin. But to provoke God unto judgment. Which naturally he does not want to do. A good man, a lover, wants the good of everybody. 
how much more God that is good. He has judgment to render. He is a God of wrath and judgment but will not always want to use it. He is slow to wrath. He prefers mercy than judgment. When God is tempted, it means you have tried him to the point he is now going to he is now provoked in anger and will use his justice and judgment over your life. And the consequence is unpalatable. In fact, when he judges you, will he be laughing? No. He will be sorrowful. You make him sorrowful. Is it willingly you, you can your child? Do you take pleasure in caning your child? No. As he goes there crying, rolling on the ground, are you, are you laughing? It's painful. Naturally, you would wish to avoid that. But the child has provoked you to that point. So, don't provoke God to the point that he now goes to judge you. He now goes to unleash divine judgment on you. Now, see Satan's temptation and Jesus' reply in Matthew chapter 4 verse 3 and 4. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Verse 4. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He now went to say another thing. To cause Jesus to tempt God. Verse 5. Then the devil take him up into the holy city. And set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And said unto him. If thou be the son of God. Cast thyself down. Cast thyself down. For it is written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Verse 7 in a chorus. One, two, go. Jesus said unto him. It is written again. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Can you see it now? Jesus here rejected the misuse of divine promise. Promise really had been given. I will help you. But that is in time of need. I will defend you. But that is against the attack of the enemy. I will save you. That is when you cry out out of real problem of life. But this is not it. The promise is not for display of pride. No. So Jesus rejected the misuse of divine promise. Yes. He rejected the provocation to carelessness that Satan in, inspire many people to go into. Many go into carelessness in their lives by the provocation of Satan 
not because there is a need a necessity no or a divine command no but just for display that's carelessness then just to display your power you know it's not every time if you have a gift you should operate in that gift it's not every time jesus has gifts but check it up there were times he never healed any people in the crusade was it like that when weren't there sick people there he never healed people there but the devil may come to say oh, why not make a display you have the power get that person there get him up has god inspired you or satan now is provoking you to do that you'll be having your ministry it can be done but not by god but satanic provocation for your display and pride and you will suffer it it's done actually for moses struck the rock twice did water come up yes but what followed judgment judgment jesus knew that so no until i see god inspire me until i see god telling me clearly that this is what he wants to do now otherwise i have finished my preaching i have not received inspiration for miracle i leave it at preaching Amen. Amen. Actually, this has helped us in this movement. Uh, we, I have operated in miraculous ministry very, very much. Oh, you are aware, my brother. Miracles of all kinds. It's mystery. But something wonderfully happened in holiness movement. Normally, when I preach, okay, miracle is going to take place. I will just know. I will just know. The information will come. And real miracles will take place. Real. But something differently is happening here. I will preach and not have a sensation for miracle. My mind will not move that direction. Ah, what happened? My mind will not move there. Hey. Yeah. Okay. I allowed it. Why, I, why must I force myself? Allow it. Yes. God is wise. This ministry is with a difference. If I begin to do miracle, miracle, the people will not consider holiness again. When they come to my meeting, their attention will be on miracles. Has he finished? Is he, has he started praying? They will, when I will pray, they will be doing another thing. Some will even lie down and sleep. I say, when pastor starts praying, wake me up. <laughs> there is a God in heaven. God shut up that area. But once in a while he permits it. Once in a while he permits it. To know that this can be done but it's not the essential thing here. It's not the essential thing here. So, in case it comes to you like that, follow the inclination of God. Don't force yourself. Otherwise, it will become Satan tempting you to tempt the Lord. Ah, did God, didn't God say, this sign shall follow them. I am. The Lord will also disappoint you at the time. To tell you. He can also disappoint you. You do all those gimmicks. Nothing come, comes out. Nothing. I know a, a great man of God in a crusade that did prayer. Prayed for miracle. Nobody came out. 
Ah, ah. Yes, you have received miracle comfort. But this is normal now. Not person came out. I don't know whether one person eventually came out or so. I can't remember. But thank God he humbled himself <laughs> and left. And left. So follow the inclination of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go forward. Jesus refused such carelessness displayed by believers who are under satanic inspiration and pride. Do it to show yourself. Therefore, let your long language be sober in matters of spirituality. Until the Lord tells you so, don't bust. Don't say, yes, bring him here. I will handle it. Not you. Not you. God, can I? Today, otherwise, <laughs> you'll be disappointed. You'll be embarrassed and put to shame. Because God wants to let you know the power is mine, not yours. Is that okay? Okay. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Jesus had the knowledge of truth. And this prevented the destruction of his life and ministry through ignorance. If he didn't know this, that's why you must give yourself to know the truth. Study. And also listen to men of truth. For the word of God in thy mouth is truth. Learn to listen to men of truth. Learn to read materials of truth. Learn to study the word of truth, the scripture. So that this ignorance that is limiting you, affecting you, affecting your service, withdrawing the presence of God from you, will not be. For thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. Had Jesus accepted satanic inspiration, he would have done it by satanic command and influence and God would have not, would have not been involved. God would have not been involved. You know, children who have gone go on hunting. Not because they need animals, but the gun that is in their hand is troubling them. They are looking for something to shoot. In, the, in our youth, when we have catapult, lizards suffer. <laughs> you want to shoot at something? Is that not so? The mango fruit suffered. We are trying your skill. Because you have something. Not because you need... Uh, were we eating lizards? <laughs> That's, we must do something. But control yourself. And let God lead you. Guide you in the use of your gift. In Jesus name. So. Had Jesus. Accepted this. To jump down from the mountain, the tower, what would have happened? Nature would have had its own place on him. Natural. Because God is not involved. Nature will have had its own place in him. The law of gravity would have worked. Because God put it there. It is a principle of truth. It's only God that can alter it if it will glorify him. This one is an act that will not glorify him, but glorify yourself. The law of gravity will be at work. So, it tells us, check up very well in what you do, that you don't tempt the Lord your God. The same thing goes with a sickness in your body. There's a sickness in your body. Of course, the scripture is there. Ah, the Lord shall take away from you all sickness. Did, was, did he tell you the method? But he told you what he would do. 
It's in there in his scripture. Of course, ye shall lay hands upon the sick and the sick shall recover. Yes. But here was this sickness. That has been, here is this sickness that has been in your body for long. You have done all the prayer. You know, God must turn to you. No, God must. There is another way. He said, no. God, you must come here. Why are you saying so? When he promised you he would take away from you all sickness, did he specify the method? Did you? Did he? What was wrong when a clean, clear method of doing it comes to you? You say, no. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. You are not the one directing him. He is the one directing you. Don't tempt him. Otherwise, you won't see him interfering with your cases. Because the natural thing to which you should have done, you refuse. You say, God, it must be this one. That's a temptation. It must be. Don't do that. Don't do that. Which means, check up. Some circumstances are dangerous that, does, that doesn't need you to take action but to be cautious. Don't begin to cut promises of God when caution is the required thing. Don't. When caution is the required thing. That's what God wants you to understand. He wants you to take action from the clear knowledge and understanding he has quickened you to. But don't display pride. He will not answer your pride. He will not answer your pride. Amen? Amen. So, let's watch out. Listen. There are some of these people that teach dry faith. Good. I have not taken medicine since I got born again. Do you know that some of them are liars? You are following testimonies of people who, who serve God with their lips. They display pride. And you think it is like that. And you follow on and you, are per you perish. You follow on. This man of God says, you follow the spirit of scripture. Whether he is telling the truth. For God can do that. It's not that it's not, it's not possible. For God can do that. But take the balance of scripture. Take the balance of scripture. You will find your way better. In Jesus name. Amen. Why? The Bible tells us. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil your environment is evil the people you're dealing with is evil Micah said something that come in this circumstance don't trust your brother not even the wife of your bosom with that information about yourself don't it means there are circumstances that you really do this. You hold your peace. Hold it. You say, I trust this, my brother. The, the days are evil. Is that okay? The days are evil. So, hold your peace. It's not in general circumstance. Now, oh, I won't tell you everything. I will... The Lord will want you to tell your wife what is essential. Even you yourself, it's not everything you want to hear. Is it everything you want to hear? So it's not everything you also want to tell anybody. You should tell anybody. 
so because of the days we are in walk cautiously with every man walk cautiously in every place walk with care even among your brethren here walk with wisdom these are days satan can use anybody anyhow be careful what is any man telling you what is any friend sharing with you what spirit is he communicating take care of yourself take care of yourself don't say you're bigger than backsliding who is the woman getting closer to you now you're getting closer to a particular woman or a man is getting closer getting closer come don't say i be don't say you believe that man so much oh don't say i believe this woman so much oh you don't know what is in him use wisdom when the thing is crossing boundary put a full stop there it's crossing boundary raise prayer alarm for yourself why the prudent man foreseeth the evil what does he do he hideth himself in proverbs proverbs chapter 22 verse 3 proverbs 22 verse 3 the bible says a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hide it himself but let's read the last sentence there one two go but the simple pass on and are punished the simple pass on and are punished that's it they suffer it because you're not thoughtful you're not calculative check up we will try to organize to watch who goes to cook in the kitchen in the program we are just being prudent because the days are evil the devil has arisen in contention in battle and will want to send his agents in to provide the food for you you watch what you eat pray well over what you eat listen to me i took time to imagine some of these leaders that you see with all confidence that they're true children of god who are not really afterward as they are discovered i said now nah, you gave them all yourself they could feed you they could do everything you eat you ate you drank from them but they were not christians you didn't know what a danger actually what a danger actually it means they could have access to your stomach to do to eat what they wanted since they were not children of god and have no fear of god if they could be so strong as to be in immorality for years and yet never show up they could still be in embezzlement of church money can they not also be in witchcraft then he say everything well the Lord took care of your ignorance but then you must pray well over every food whoever gives it wherever you're eating it pray very well over every food you must make sure those cooking for you are well selected that the enemies will not come in well said and if you come to understand something that this is the nature of this place then the prudent should hide himself 
the prudent man since you have foreseen that no 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 evil is here then hide yourself hide yourself in the book of john chapter 7 verse 1 to verse 8 john chapter 7 verse 1 after these things jesus walked in galilee for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Who was that? Jesus. The captain of the faith. The anointed of God, the Christ. God, man. Demonstrating this thing because he, will, he is acting in human level. We will follow his steps. The people are planning to kill me there. I won't go there now. What if I said the angels of God are on my left hand side, they are on my right hand side, they are in my front, they are in my back. As I just come in there, they will be scattering. Witches will just be confessing. What if he had said so? He will be tempting the Lord his God. The promises are there for protection, but not in carelessness. Not at times of carelessness. If you know the truth and will not do it, to him that knoweth the truth and knoweth what to do and does not do it, to him it is what? It is a sin. Jesus never went to the jury among the Jews in Jerusalem. Why? Wow. They were looking for him to kill him. So, walk circumspectly. Again, look at it in verse 2. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at, was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. Can you see the temptation of Satan here inspiring him to the flesh? What is the aim of going to the Judea now? That thy disciples may see the works that thou doest. See another temptation. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret. And he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. The same temptation of Satan. Same temptation. Check your provocations. Check those people who are speaking to you. Check and ensure Satan is not giving you inspiration to do evil, to be proud, to display pride in the name of God will help you. You just want to show your glory. Be careful. Check it and re reject it. But how did he answer it? In fact, why did they even say this? Let's read verse 5. One, two, go. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Satan used them. Satan used them. Satan used them. Please, brother. If a neighbor is sick and calls you for prayer, and say, I believe that you go you, because of your church, because of this, because this is my sick person. If you pray, it will go. In case you pray, the thing didn't go. Don't carry church into the matter. Amen? None unto God are his complex works. You prayed, it didn't go. Don't say, give me time. It must go. Is it not me? It must go. <laughs> After three days fast, I'm coming back. This matter has, you have carried this matter to your flesh. You have tried your best. It has not worked. Give up. Let another cause take place. Otherwise, don't allow a sinner to play drum for you to dance. You'll be dancing the dance of Samson in the midst of sinners. God is not with you. So, I, 
but, but Jesus answered and said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. You don't need caution. It's me that need caution because I know the battles I face. I know the state of my life. I know the sickness that easily I am prone to. It is you that have no problem. I know the attacks of my life. That's why I am cautious. The world cannot hate you. But me it hated because I testify of it. That the works thereof are evil. They are not fighting you. They are fighting me. I who face the fight must prepare how I will overcome. Caution and wisdom is part of victory. For we, we, uh, the Bible tells us wisdom is power. Money is power. Wisdom is power. But the power of wisdom is more excellent. Go up. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast. For my time is not yet come. I will, I'm, I'm calculating. I'm checking the period in which it will be impossible for them there to do evil. I'm checking it up. But if I go this early time, they have enough time to do evil, evil and wickedness. It's your time you can go. May the Lord teach us more in Jesus' name. Amen. Do not tempt the Lord your God as some do. First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. I read verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 9. Neither let us tempt Christ. As some of them also tempted. And were destroyed of serpents. Neither let us tempt Christ. As some of them also tempted. And were destroyed of serpents some tempted Christ tempted God and the, the repercussion was heavy I have told you already I've told you about the nature of God God is loving merciful and gracious that is his nature as he revealed to Moses look at it in Exodus chapter 33 Exodus chapter 33 God revealed to Moses His nature and told Moses who he is. Exodus chapter 33, I read verse 18 to verse 23. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Now, chapter 34. Chapter 34, verse 5 of Exodus. To verse 8, it says, 
And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord, the nature of our God. He said, the Lord, I'm, I'm verse 6, and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, I am the Lord, self-existent, Jehovah. The Lord God, self-existent, that has all power to do everything. Power of creation. But the first attribute he shot towards man, merciful and gracious. It's a merciful God. It's a God of kindness. Merciful and gracious. The revelation of God to man is, is face of mercy. He shows his authority. He shows his nature. His eternity. Authority. But love. For God so love. Merciful. And gracious. Long suffering. Patient. With evil. Patient with people. And abundant in goodness and truth. Keeping mercy for thousands. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Can you see now? All about God thus far is beautiful. All about him is nice. Car is fine. We can love him. We can depend upon him. We can come and stand before his face. We can play with him. We, can, we could hurt him in a way that he can still be patient. But there is the last attribute. Which often he would have not loved to exercise. He put it at the last and what is that? And that will by no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. This attribute of judgment is at the end. All good was, in, was revealed to you all good so you can see god all good judgment is part of him but it's at the end it's not his will he, do, he does not judge willingly it is when it becomes necessary that he brings justice to it and moses met haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped and then he said if now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us. For it is a stiff-necked people. And pardon our iniquity and our sin. And take us for thine inheritance. May this God be with us in holiness movement. Amen. That is our prayer. That we will enjoy this wonderful attribute of this great and merciful God. Then many will make it to heaven. Amen. Yet, with all that, we still have to say, don't tempt God as others do. See him again in Jonah. Jonah chapter 4. Jonah chapter 4. See how Jonah described God. He told God the reason why he himself didn't want to go and deliver the Nineveh. 
the Ninevites. He didn't want to. Why? Because he knew God. Look at it in verse four, chapter 4 verse 1. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he was very angry for Nineveh to be saved. What, did hap- what displeased Jonah? Verse 10. Let's read it of chapter 3. 1, 2, go. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. John said, you see, that's why I said I will not go to that place. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly that he was very angry. And he, um, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was this, this not my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness and repented thee of the evil. You don't want to really judge people. Even when you pronounce judgment, threaten them with judgment. If they change, you change, you don't bring the judgment. I know it. That's our God. So have confidence in him. Yet don't tempt the Lord God as some do. That's what God will, uh, God will want you to know. Don't tempt the Lord God. There's this snake, dangerous snake, that doesn't bite on time because the teeth, uh, the teeth fix on each other and it's not easy to lose. But don't stand on that snake for long. Is that clear? Don't stand on that snake for long. Because if it gets provoked, the provocation will loosen the teeth immediately. And once it strikes, you will not escape. Don't. That our God is merciful. Don't play over his intelligence. Don't. He is quiet. Don't take him for granted. Don't. That's what God will want you to understand. Very important. Why? Some tempted. Look at it. In Numbers chapter 14. Numbers 14, verse 20. Let's start from verse 20. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt, And in the wilderness. And have tempted me now. These ten times. And have not hearkened to my voice. Surely. They shall not see the land. Which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them. That provoked me. See it. But my servant Caleb. Because he had another spirit with him and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land where into he went, and this and his seed shall possess it. And he sees verse 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, How long will I bear with this evil congregation? Whose mama against me I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel 
which they murmur against me. Say unto them, as truly as I live, said the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from 20 years old upward, which have murmured against me. Can you see what the Lord says? You have, they have tempted the Lord. They have tempted. But can you see his patience? Temptation number one, he kept quiet. Temptation number two, he kept quiet. Every time you go into sin, you are tempting the Lord. What I, where, how? You are asking God, you have it in your word that you will judge the sinner. Do it, let me see. That's what you have. You have. That's what you are saying to him. Otherwise, could you go to sin number one? And you're going to sin number two? Could you go to sin number two and be going to sin number three? You are saying you have it in your promise. That the soul that sinned it shall die. Do it now, let me see. That's what you're saying. You are playing over his mercy. You are. Playing over the mercy of God. Over the patience of God. But how long there is an end? There is an end to your temptation. There is an end to it. The Lord shall arise because he too is a God of judgment. You are provoking your brother. You are oppressing your brother. You are doing evil against the work of God. You are doing evil against the people of God. You are fighting with an underprivileged man. Oppressing him. Does he not see? He is patient. And your continuing is a temptation to God. You are saying, God, don't you have it in your promise? In your word? That you will fight against he that fights the righteous. Do it for me now. Let me see. I have handled this righteous man and I will tear him. I will tell lies on him. I will do this. Please. Don't tempt the Lord your God. Neither let us tempt Christ. As others also tempted. Don't. He is the God of judgment. Was he not the one that destroyed the first world with a flood? Was he not the one that destroyed the first world with a flood? Was he not the one that destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? Was he not the one that turned Nebuchadnezzar into an animal in the bush and sent him from among men to the forest to live there for three and a half years? Why is he doing like that? Because he's patient. Was he not the one but for seven years? Was he not the one that caused Herod to be smitten and eaten up by wombs immediately. Was he not the one that struck by Jesus, Elemas, 
with blindness. Why are you doing like that? Was she not the one that decreed against Judas Iscariot? And he fell from the tree and burst his stomach. Why are you doing that? He's a God of judgment. Why are you thinking that he will not judge you? The Bible says, because sentence against an evil work is not speedily executed. Therefore, the sons of man, of men, have taken upon themselves to do evil. How is it because the judgment is not speedily that you remain in immorality? Man, even man of God, is that not a reproach? You're bringing to God in that land. Borrowing people's money and, are not, and not paying. Until the lips of the people are full of blasphemy. And yet you're there in service. Yet you're there in service. Practicing witchcraft even. Going to borrow power from the demonic realm so that you can also use power. And the Lord is quiet. You're doing ministry. You're doing service. Uh -uh. Don't tempt the Lord your God. Don't. Is it because he is gentle? He is loving? He is merciful? He is patient? That you are taking his good attributes meant to carry many to eternal life for granted. You didn't hear that he doomed the devil, Satan. The most glorious creature. You didn't hear that he cast down a tithe of the angels, great principalities and powers from heaven and doomed them to hell. Come, you didn't hear that he prevented Moses from going to the promised land on earth. Why are you doing that? Patient with you and you're doing that? Don't tempt the Lord your God. He was not happy. He said, these people tempted me. Ten times. I was all patient. They pushed me to the wall. Now I have made a decree against them. They shall not enter my rest. That, is, that thing you have lost by this decree is worse than all the gains of this life. For what shall it profit a man if he shall Gain the whole world and lose his soul. He told Cain, you are cursed. You shall be a vagabond upon the earth. You will still be alive. But the meaning of life will be taken away from you. This is the God of judgment. You want to take him to this point of your life? You want him to scatter you. Chai. It's disturbing him. In the book of Hebrews. Chapter 3. I read. Verse 7. To the end. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, 
in the day of temptation in the wilderness when your fathers tempted me proved me and so my works 40 years your fathers tempted me ah ah what's wrong with them I did miracles for these people in their eyes in Egypt I displayed my supernatural power over Pharaoh and his nation I displayed my supernatural power over the sea for these people I spoke with the, my voice, came down upon Mount Sinai, the mountain shook, there was fire and smoke and darkness. They heard the voice of God. I brought manna from heaven for them. I caused water to come out of the rock. All this one, these people don't believe me. Uh -uh. They want me to use judgment. I avoid the judgment side. I displayed love, kindness, mercy, all. Oh, when I saw that it was not working, that these people had in their hearts. I enter into judgment. They saw my works. They saw the result. Forty years I wasted them in the wilderness. I caused them to die. Not one met the promised land. Among those people I decreed against. Don't tempt God as others do. What is the temptation? They harden their hearts at the voice of the Lord. They harden their hearts. That's why he said, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Where are you hardening your heart? That you are not moved in the presence of God here. You are not moved. You are free. No fear. With all this presence of God. With all these revelations God has given to us. With all these prophecies God has given to us. With all this special. His presence. His power. His progress. His knowledge. His grace. Ah. And you will still be doing like this here. You will still be doing like this among us. Don't allow God to go into judgment in this place. Because who will stand? Who will stand? If God opens himself in judgment, are you going to stand? The earth you will lose the meaning of, of living on earth even before you die. On earth. The meaning will be lost to you. Life will turn to bitterness. You will start hell on earth. Yes. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and showed my works 40 years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their hearts and they have not known my ways. I was grieved. It's the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. You are doing a thing. The Lord says, don't do that. You don't bother. Preaching even came. Preaching. 
came. You don't bother. Hey. It's like a woman married a second wife to a man. The woman said, she opened Bible like that one day to read. If it, the, she, where she was reading is, whosoever live, uh, divorces his wife to marry another commits adultery. A woman who leaves her husband and marries another commits adultery. Eh? That's a manifestation of the works of God. God carried you into a privacy and shot you himself. He still didn't change you. He still didn't cause repentance. The devil is not inside this matter now. It's you. Don't say Satan blocked you. No. There are many windows to jump out of that house, that building. Many windows to jump out. The wall of that house is not iron. It is sand. It can be chopped down. And you get out. So don't say, Satan overpowered me. No. Everybody say no. It's you. It's not Satan that did it there in the wilderness. Although he's in the corner. Satan is selling his goods. If you never came to bar, you won't be having his property. You needed him to assist you. That's why he came. So, God did every way to show forth his presence. The dumb are speaking with man's voice for, for but the madness of that man. He later died because he was senseless. It's not Satan. God did everything for he delighted in mercy. He said, they tempted me. They proved me. They wanted me to show my anger side. Eventually, I brought it. The day stay. Did they survive? What's happening to you, man? Why are you like that? You're so tough. So, he is warning. Warning. Talking. He said, Verse 11. So I swear in my wrath. They shall not enter into my rest. See how much time it takes before God closes heaven for a man. But he can close it on you when you are still alive on earth. See how long it takes. Surely, it's not the will of God that any should perish. Surely. I swear, swear in my wrath, I had to bring forth wrath. I made a decree that they shall not enter into my rest. They never met it to the promised land. How should somebody serve God and go to hell except he had hardened his heart in iniquity? How can someone serve God in holy place and yet go to hell? Except that he hardened and God closed the door. I'm saying, let it not be, 
Be fast in your case that the door be not closed for you. You may wake up and never find it, for Esau never recovered his birthright. Why? The pleasure of the flesh. The pleasure of the flesh. He closed the door against them. Therefore, brethren, we are saying, verse 12, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. All the things the Lord is saying, you might disbelieve them. All the revelations coming up here, you in your corner will be saying, I don't believe. And that is hurting God. Who, bring them, who brought them out? Is God happy with these churches and ministers that he took somebody to hell, to heaven? Gave them message to save humanity. And they who are standing before the people, he gave them the authority he has, they have now. They use the authority to silence the message of God. And cause the people of God to, 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 to deafen their ears to the word of God. Is it a pleasure to him? Why? Because of unbelief. Where do you sit in your corner and you say, I don't believe. I don't believe those things they're telling you. I don't believe the appearances of Jesus they're telling you there. And you are one of us here. You are one of us here. Going to be talking like that in your, maybe in your state. In where he asks you to go and invite you for ministry. Or with your colleague. Your neighbor. Or your family. I don't believe those things they're saying there. And you're here. What are you here for? To tempt the Lord. To tempt the Lord. Why don't you believe? I don't. Uh, is, is, is ministry only in that place? Why, why, why? The, the Lord told you this is his movement. Do you know the difference? Do you know the meaning? Do you know the meaning? Are you seeing iniquity here? What is wrong with you? Unbelief. I don't believe. As a result, you're even fighting the person the Lord is using to bring revelation. You say they hired him. They sponsored her. You, oh no, they sponsored them. Those testimonies are lies. You know, they are paying them. To cause the work God is doing here to be the same with that which Satan is doing in other places. You are tempting God. You are tempting God. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 16, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 16, And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment that wickedness was there. Oh, chapter 3, verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. That wickedness was there. And the place of righteousness. That iniquity was there. That's another thing. You can see this type of thing. Lord, did you not sow good seed in your field? Yes. 
But where are the, the, the ties among them? We went and saw ties among the weed. Oh, an enemy has done this. Satan wants his representation in every society, including the highest holy society, as far as it is in the earthly realm. That is it. Satan will want to give power to his own. Look at, moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment, of truth. Where things should be done in truth. Everything should be carried out in truth. But I'm seeing wickedness there. Among the judges, there are wicked ones among them. Who will never stand on the truth? Their ways are contrary. They take bribe. Among the judges that are meant to bring justice, wicked ones are there. This is a mystery. You know, Solomon, he says he's confused about life. This life is a confusion. And I saw in the place of righteousness, where people should be righteous, where every environment should be holy, iniquity was there. How did this thing happen? The devil wants his representation. Be careful whom you appoint into any function. You might be appointing satanic representation. The devil wants his representation. It's a political party. He wants his representation. He is SSS. He, Satan himself is security agency. He will want to sponsor his people to where children of God are for their security. For appropriate information. He is also a war strategist that will send people inside to start the war inside and you will not know. In that way, the people inside know the authorities, those that matter, who will not be exposed to the outside enemies, the one that has come in. For Judas knew who was Jesus among the twelve, among the thirteen. He directed them to Jesus. He knew him. If those people came, everybody seemed to resemble because they're not always staying in Jerusalem. But Judas, among all the faces you're seeing of 13 people gathered, Jesus he knows. So be very careful. Backslider. Satan is interested in your backsliding because you will represent him. You will represent him. Your suggestions will be spirit, demon, demon spirit inspired. Your thoughts will not be pure, naturally. Your waters will be polluted. Your leadership will be corrupted. You can be used to oppose the main leader. For you have learned their language. You have learned the language. You have known how. David said to Hushai, go to be with Absalom and taught the wisdom of Ahithophel. Give me the necessary information of what his plans are. Pray well to get an associate. Pray well to get a leader. 
Watch well for those who have backslidden. Get them handled appropriately. Else there will be obstacles. They will become the weapons of warfare in the hands of Satan. God is no more in their heart. For he that keepeth not the commandment of God has no God. So, that is what we need to understand. We need to take this. Has God interest at all? That the sinners be destroyed. Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel 33. I read verse 10 to verse 12. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Say unto them as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For where will ye die, O house of Israel? Yeah. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. The righteousness of the righteous. When the Lord is handling you, all your past will be forgiven, forgotten. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he, if he trust to his own righteousness and commit iniquity. All his righteousness shall, be for, shall not be remembered. But for the iniquity that he had committed, he shall die for it. But has he pleasure at all? That the, you, you die in sin and lose heaven in chapter 18. Verse 23 to 26. Ezekiel chapter 18. Verse 23. Have I any pleasure at all. That the, that the, that the wicked should die. Seeth the Lord God. And not that he should turn from his ways. And live. But when the righteous turn it away from his righteousness. And committed iniquity. And do it according to all the abominations. That the wicked man do it. Shall he leave. All his righteousness. That he hath done. Shall not be mentioned. In his. In his shall not be mentioned. In his trespass. That he hath trespassed. And in his sin. That he hath sinned. In them shall he die. Yet ye say the way of the Lord is not equal. Here now is house of Israel. Is not my way equal? And not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turned away from his righteousness and committed iniquity and died in them for his iniquity that he had done shall he die. Can you see? Verse 30. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. Everyone according to his ways, said the Lord God. Repent and turn yourself from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your reign. Cast away from you all your transgressions. Why by ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit? Why will ye die? O house of Israel, 
For I have no pleasure in the date of him that died, said the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves, turn ye yourselves, and live ye. We are pleading with you. Please. Don't leave us and go and be number two in hell. Don't. Please repent. As you leave this place, any abominations in your hand, abomination in your house abomination in your family abomination in your ministry abomination in all categories it has ended repent why must you die is it a pleasure to hear the record of our, the dead the death in hell now? Is it a pleasure? Was it an entertainment? Why do you want to give us sorrow of heart? By tempting God. Has thou fallen and shall thou not rise? The gap given to you is not enough to have broken through that wickedness. You think you will continue? It's not possible. Patience has an end. There's an end, says the Lord. There's an end. Counsel and warning. Don't sin. Don't commit sin. This is a holy place. Don't sin in holy place. Don't do immorality here. Don't practice witchcraft here. Don't be money embezzler here. Don't do what Ananias and Sapphira did. Telling lies in holy place. Don't tell lies here. This is a holy place. A new place the Lord is raising up for himself. We are young and tender. Don't defile this place. Don't provoke God to anger here. Let it not be that one man does a thing and the Lord judges a group. You want us to be judged? You want God to turn his back? We will deliver you as that wise woman. Job. What do you want to do? That you want to destroy an inheritance among the Lord's inheritances. Far be it. It's Bikri. Bikri. A man of Belial. That rose up against David. Deliver him alone. And we shall go our way. Our prayer would rescue, will point you out and will deliver you to the Lord. Amen. To serve this place. We will pray. If you decide to harden, instead of allowing God to turn his back at us, because of you, we will not allow that. We will pray. We will fast and pray. We will fast and deliver you up. That the race should be shown mercy. For God knows that with all our heart, we are doing this work. We are not playing hypocrisy here. 
We have sacrificed everything, everything. We have done hard restitutions. We have, done, we have lost the world. You want to affect heaven again for us? Hi, Jesus. Why? If you prefer Satan, we will deliver such a one to Satan. To keep this place clean. Don't sin. In case you have sinned, I write unto you that ye may not sin. But uh, if any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation of our sins. Carry to God. Amen? Amen. I hope you are not sleeping. Carry to God. Carry your sin. Quickly. Take it to God. And seek for forgiveness. I've told you who he is. Merciful and gracious. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and what? And sin. He will not bear anger forever. He will forgive you. That's what Jonah said of God. And actually the Ninevites enjoyed it. Take yours to him. Waste no time. Waste no time. Go and get it settled. Go and plead with him. He will forgive you. The restitution, do it. Ask help from him. Ask help from him. And do your restitution. And we, if it concerns leadership, my brother, we love you. We will not do you evil. We are not for your shame. No. We are here as a physician. The physician does not expose the sick man, whatever is his sickness. Even if it is sickness unto death. He does not expose the sick man right out in papers. There is a man in my hospital now. Everybody come and see him. He was fighting with his wife. And the wife cut off his manhood. He is rolling on the bed. Everybody go there and see. Have you seen a physician like that? So is it we you are thinking that when you come. We will now expose you. Don't we have God that will fear? Are we not going to walk after righteousness? Don't we want heaven ourselves? Please, if it requires confession to authority, do. We will take care. We will nurse you up. A man came here yesterday from another state just to confess his terrible sin. The way I handled that man. You were there. Wonderful. What he thought would happen was not what happened. I even let him know that uh, the thing is not as great as you were thinking now. As you were thinking. That relieved him. Because the way I gave them, you understand that I gave it to him. Relieved him. It's like uh, our pastor there was saying a man met with him in the state and said I have come to hand over all that is in my chapter because I committed sin so I, I'm not fit for the work again so I'm bringing everything he said how do you sin he said, this, today I dreamed that I slept with a woman <laughs> today how can somebody like that do the work of God I can't do the work of God again I've become defiled then the pastor asked him, I'm sure you have dreamed that you ate food before in the dream. When you woke up, did you drink water to balance it? He said, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> he said, no. Because that's not reality. 
everything in the dream realm is not reality and so you're not guilty for it what did you say he did <laughs> He jump, eh? I'm free. Come, you yourself will jump. We will, we will lead you softly. We will show you love. Oh, you committed immorality. How did it happen? We are now for you. How it will not happen? That's our own. How that thing will not happen again? My plan with this person is how the thing he did should not happen. Because coming shows he has strength. He has strength. You hear that when there's a motor accident and somebody is crying, oh, it seems there's still strength in him. That's why he's crying. He's the one that lies quiet that you, may not, you think he may not have life again. It's when you are quiet and we get at you you don't have life again. That's why the matter is. But if you cry out, you have hope. There's a difference. Somebody will say, eh, in holiness movement, I've noticed that eh, if they remove their leader, no more restoration. You are removed and you, don't, you go your way. Are we selling leadership here? We are selecting those to be leaders. You are removed for now. We don't know what will happen. But you go your way. You even start fighting the movement. I say, give it to me back. Give me back my leadership. Eh? We're not selling leadership here. Is leadership for sale here? <laughs> or we're distributing it. Everyone has the right to it. It's the choice of God. If you are removed today, Go and give us the righteous life. It's even a call, a, a temptation, a trial, a test of faith to see how you would behave. To see how you would behave. If we suspect you of evil and did that to you, we are watching how you will respond. It is a final response we shall say, surely. This man is not guilty. He's a righteous man. We shall have double confidence in your life. Paul was beaten by a snake after the jeopardy in the sea. The people say, uh, this man is an evil man. That's why, although he escaped death in the sea, justice will not pardon him. But he shook the snake in the fire and sat there very peacefully. After a little while, what, who, who did he become? <laughs> he said, this man is a God. Quickly sacrifice, quickly sacrifice on him. But you little thing, you turn off. You're angry. You go into criticism. You're no more coming to the meeting. If you want me there, give me back my position. Devil voice devil's son, devil's daughter, God removed you, and you will not come back. Simple. Ready to show mercy if you follow the course of mercy. You say, I'm fearing my job. Why are you fearing your job than your eternal life? You're fearing your job, not eternal life. You will go to hell. We people, they are pleading to have a chance to come back to the earth for just a few minutes. You're wasting all this time on earth. They would, put, they would cast stones on you in hell. They will cast stones on you. I mean, the occupants of hell. That's why Satan said, we deal with them. Demons, we deal with them in hell. Because they had all the privilege and, but wasted it. Come up confess but what if you say never I take personal pleasure it's a contract I have with Satan I take personal pleasure in this thing uh, you have tempted God 
But how long? It will not take long. Look at it in Numbers. Chapter 32. Numbers chapter 32 I read Numbers 32 verse 6 And Moses said unto the children of God and to the children of Reuben, shall your breeding go to war and, ye sit, and, and shall ye sit here? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord hath given them? Thus, did your fathers when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up unto the valley of Ishkol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which the Lord had given them. And the Lord's anger was kindled the same time. And he swore saying, Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, uh, uh, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel. And he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years. Until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. And behold, ye are rising up in your father's stead. An increase of sinful men to augment Yet the fierce anger of the Lord toward Israel. For if ye turn away from after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness, and ye shall destroy all these people. Can you see what the Lord Moses was telling the children of God, the children of Reuben? Half tribe and half, half tribe of Manasseh, who wanted to stay this side of the river and never cross over to the actual land because they felt that there was enough pasture for their cattle. He said, What are you talking about? There's battle to fight over there. You want to withdraw yourself for your convenience because you found what you're looking for? These people. You want to discourage the children of Israel. When you don't cross over, they will know that some evil thing is there. That's why you're not crossing over. Everybody will say, we'll take up another decision again. And God will get provoked. Is that not what your fathers did? That caused the wastages of the children of Israel. 40 years in the wilderness. And ye have risen up again on the state of your fathers. An increase of evil men. That is it. These churches were destroyed for these sins, ministerial sins. Their pastors and overseers were sinners. They were sleeping with the women as the sons of Eli. They were sleeping with the zealous women sleep, walking in the temple. Were sleeping with the, the women, were given that they trusted in them. You had authority of God in you. These uh, uh, sisters in the Catholic Church believe that the fathers are righteous, so the immorality committed with the fathers are righteous immorality. That's what they told them. That's what they told them, so they don't feel guilty about it, and therefore, God is not in that place. 
God has nothing to do with that place. That's how they destroyed these churches. Have you come again to cause God to leave a place like this? By joining, by bringing the sins of this man to this place, your eyes are on money wherever you find it. You embezzle, and yet you seek leadership. You're even asking, give me preaching to preach. Why have you not given me preaching all this while? I want to show them I am here. You are now making every beautiful woman is your own. Young and old. To the extent of people's wives or widows. Hey! In this place. To cause this place to become a monument. To have a name but not alive. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Help. May God help us. Amen. You are our brother who is still in the faith. Let's plead that God will help us. I don't know why some people could sell themselves to Satan. That every part of God, they want to face it and destroy it. The battle is strong. Ha -ha. What is the problem with you? If you want to commit iniquity, is it in this place? You are like those people who find church setting, church service, a very good place for sleep. Sleep is sweet at that time. So your iniquity is sweet here. It's sweet. You find the women cheap. At least they should be free from HIV now since they are not committing adultery with anybody else. Our God should remember us. God should remember us. That we are sincere. He knows the people. He should handle them accordingly. And so, but the children of Israel said no. Look at what they said in verse 16. And they came near unto him and said, We will build sheep falls here for our cattle and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will go ready. I and mean, we ourselves will go ready, armed before the children of Israel until we have brought them unto their place. And our little ones shall dwell in the fenced cities. Because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return unto our houses. Until the children of Israel. Have inherited every man. His inheritance. For we will not inherit with them. On yonder side Jordan. Or forward. Because our inheritance is falling to us. On this side Jordan eastward. And Moses said unto them. Can we read that scripture? want to go if ye will do this thing if ye will go armed before the lord to war and will go all of you armed over jordan before the lord until he had driven out his enemies from before him and the land is subdued before the lord then Afterward, ye shall return and be guiltless before the Lord and before Israel. And this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord. And be sure your sins will find you out. That's it. Are we living in a place where there are gifts of the Holy Spirit? Do we have the Holy Ghost, the spirit of prophecy among our midst? You cannot hide. 
no amount of it. You will be recovered. You will be discovered. If you will not willingly repent, your sin will find you out. The revelation will come. Circumstance will come. A lady will be running and say, hey, help, pastor, help. What has happened? My coordinator, my coordinator. Just wait. I'm telling you the truth. The Lord wants to give you honor. That's why he's giving you this message. Before time. Before time. Before he causes information, evidences to shoot up from everywhere. You will not only be removed as you feared, you shall receive the disdain of life. And there shall be no hope over you again. If you do it by yourself, there's hope. There's, you have strength. Some, you, at least you have the fear of God. That's why you were moved. There's hope in your life. Whatever the sin is, there's hope. We can recover you and heal you. But if God now comes in judgment because you have tempted him and brings you out, brother, we will not know what, how it shall be with you. We will not have hope. Because when a can refused, hardened his heart, tribe all tribes gathered and they, they were moving from one tribe to another he still believed in himself so stubborn until they pick up his tribe and they were going on father's house it didn't touch him they will not discover me multitudes of people how would they know me that deception is set and put it in you Boom. They have now come to him. <coughs> family upon family now. Bim! His father's house was picked. This boy, not too stubborn to cry out. The Lord is doing this, giving you a chance. Can you show that some grace remains in your life? By coming out to confess. See, all this patient work is for you. All this group of people... Thousands were gathered because of you. Mercy of God. Whether you will now repent. Whether you come out on your own. If you harden. You shall never see his salvation. They shall not enter into my rest. You will not see his mercy. Thank you Lord. Let's rise up for prayer. You are a man. Please, just change. Change. Don't remain that terrible, wicked, fallen, backsliding man under doom. Re recover yourself. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah, my brother. Did you hear the message very well? This message. Go and find another place in the camp to pray. I give you 30 minutes. What about you? Did you hear the message well? Move. Go and just look for any place. Take your Bibles. Take your Bibles.
What about you? You heard the message very well. Now, let's go out. And uh, did you, my brother there, you heard the message well. You too? Okay, let's follow. Clue for anywhere. Maybe I give you 40 minutes. Yes, you heard the message well. All of, did you hear the message well? Yeah, go and look for places of prayers. Go and settle with God. 40 minutes. There is a channel here for you who want, but one, 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 find your place. All out, anyway, all out. Find your place. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323 You can also reach us through our email address Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in You. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in You. You are the living Savior.